Lawson, and I welcome you to my master class on learning how to play the bassoon. Whether you've played a little bit, a lot, maybe you'll learn a little something today that might help you either improve or could I encourage you to really get started with the bassoon. So um, first thing is we need to get it out of the case. But what I do first is I get my reed out. And um, you may not have a box, but I would recommend getting a box. Um, because if you have a reed box, it keeps your reeds in really excellent condition and you want your reeds to last a long time. And so one of the best ways to do that is to keep them in a case that will keep them dry when you need them dry, but also will keep them in, in good shape. Um, you want to soak your reed first. So I stick my reed in a little cup of water. So you can see I have a little bit of a uh, a holder here. You don't need to have one of these, but it's a little convenient. But this size of a cup that's sealed, and you can put the water in your case and keep it. And so I put it in the water, I turn it upside down, and I get the whole reed wet so that it seals well on the vocal. And by the time I finish putting the instrument together, uh, my reed will be wet. So the first thing is a seat strap. Uh, for those of you who are, are not sure, um, if you've seen bassoon players with neck straps, you know that um, it's possible to do both. But let me tell you that the seat strap is the best way to do this. And um, the reason is because the bassoon is heavy. And so if you're sitting and you've got a neck strap on, the instrument tends to feel like it's just gonna tip right out of your hands and it's not good. So, um, you know, we really think a lot about um, our bodies and how healthy we can keep them as players. And that includes the physical aspect of playing so that your instrument is well balanced and doesn't really cause issues with your hands and your arm and your, your shoulders and neck. So a seat strap and um, these are available in a variety of styles. I like the clip because when I put it on it stays there and I won't lose it. So we start with the boot or the bottom joint first then you'll notice in your, in your instrument case, um, if you open your bassoon, uh, there are multiple sections and we're going to start actually with the shorter section and match it up with the hole. And instead of twisting, we actually want to push. And this might mean that you would need some, uh, some cork grease, but the idea is that if you just push and slightly turn it, um, then you won't uh, bend keys and it will be um, also aligned here. Notice that there is a like a half circle here that aligns with the other side of the instrument. So be really careful about aligning this first because when this is aligned first then we put in the longer joint, the longest joint in the case and we'll be really careful about putting it in straight again not twisting but just pushing. And if you need a little cork grease, um, that's okay. That will work. So this is obviously most of the instrument. Then after that, the last piece we put on in terms of the body of the instrument is the bell. Again, holding this key down so that this is up and does not get in contact with this. Um, and lots of times this gets bent pretty easily, so you want to be really careful of that. And um, so that this lines up here. So we're going to also line up the back. And some of you might have a lock on your bassoon. You can use it. It's not required. Um, and the reason that um, it is there is because it, sometimes these can be, the two joints can be loose. So if you, if you lock it, it's fine. But what happens is that you need to be able to use your thumb on all these keys in the back. and if you need to adjust so that the keys are closer, you can turn the long joint. So for those of us with slightly shorter thumbs, then we make just a little bit of an adjustment so that you can see that these keys are a little closer so we don't have so much of a gap. So for young players in particular, we want to pay attention to ways that the instrument, um, in the way it comes out of the case or the way it seems like it ought to be built, does have a bit of adjustment that we can make. The last part is the vocal. And this is uh, the part, obviously we put the reed on the end, but I wanna say a couple things about this part. 
Sometimes they come out of the case with dents in them, sometimes they're a little bent, and unfortunately, um, that's not going to let the bassoon play well. In fact, it'll make it play incorrect pitches, bad intonation. So, um, be very careful. Notice whether the vocal has dents. Um, if you have two in your case, try the other one. Um, but double check this particular part because it does make a difference. Um, we're going to put it in the receiver or the hole on the top and we're going to grab it here, not out here, but here. And we're going to again just push and slightly turn. Um, and the reason we're doing this is because it's stronger here than it is here. If we pulled here, this could break open and, and actually damage the vocal. So be mindful of that. And your whisper key wants to line up with this hole here. So once you have your instrument together, you want to bring it up and attach your seat strap. And you're going to want to make some adjustments. So let's think about this for a second. Um, you'll notice that I'm sitting in a chair that pretty much uh, fits me and my feet are on the floor, my body's straight, and the instrument is on the right-hand side of my body, and I can really trust that the seat strap will hold it up. So um, then we want to check to see this needs to be here, but do you see mine's just a little too high, so I'm going to adjust it, pull on the strap just until the instrument, when I bring it to my, my face, the vocal is exactly opposite my embouchure. And that's how you'll know where to place your instrument. And the other also is that if you're sitting straight in your chair and you bring the instrument to you, it will be well balanced on your leg. An instrument that does this or an instrument that does this will compromise your ability of your fingers to play with good technique. So a couple things to think about when you're sitting down and actually starting the instrument. And then we'll add the reed. And it should be wet enough by the time you've got your instrument together and you're going to put it on, push, and turn until it is secure. And when you bring it to your mouth, notice if the reed is sitting flat on this lip. If it's turned just a little, make sure it's flat so that when I go to play, you can see it sits very much center of my embouchure. Um, so we're going to start um, by thinking about how to make good sound. Um, but before we do that, um, make sure that you've thought about getting your instrument together, make sure you've checked your seating position, and you're going to want to make sure that your reed is comfortably placed in front of your mouth. And <clears throat> in the sense of holding our instrument, our instrument is hold, held mostly with our left hand, and we find a comfortable place for our fingers to cover the holes. And you want to check to be sure that when you're putting your fingers down that you're actually touching more on the end of your fingers so that you have a little bit of a curve here. If you finger with the flat part of your finger, in other words, closer to the first joint, you're gonna get leakage. And that's not a good thing because what happens is even though you might have your fingers on the right holes, the air is going to be coming out and you don't really want that to happen. So on the left hand that's important and then your left thumb wants to be on this key to begin with which is called the whisper key and you'll find um, a fingering chart in the materials that are also part of this master class and you can see how to find that particular key. That's really important to have that key pressed when we're going to play our first notes. Our right hand is going to rest here. Um, some of you might have what we call a crook, something to rest your hand on. Um, I prefer not using one. Uh, my instrument fits me very nicely in terms of my hand, so I don't need the support in my right hand. Some students might have hands that it might be beneficial to have that additional uh, stable crook there and hand rest um, if you want to do that. But the, the point is, Again, the ends of our fingers want to be um, covering those holes. So hole one, two, and then there is a key for the third finger. And then eventually you're going to use your pinky and your thumb. But to begin with, uh, we're not going to quite get 
to all 10 of our fingers. Eventually, I think that will be possible, but maybe not just here in the beginning. So a comfortable feel for the instrument, good balance, uh, looking straight ahead. Um, and also, let me uh, make sure that there's something maybe you're not aware of, and that is bassoon players, you can see, we've got an angle here, and it, if our music stand is straight on, then it covers up part of the stand. So what you're gonna to want to do is make sure that when you sit down, particularly in ensemble, you want to move that stand a little bit to your right and adjust that so that when you're sitting, that the music is beyond where your instrument is in your eye eyesight. So when you're looking at the stand, the, the music probably is gonna be a little more on your left hand side of the stand with the stand moved to the right. And it might mean that you might have to ask your friends who sit on the right hand side maybe to give you a little more space because not only the music stand, but notice we need space for that instrument here. And it extends down and in order to play with good technique and good playing position, the instrument has to have a good angle. If we're forced to play this way or forced to play this way, our adjustments really affect our ability to play well. And so you really don't want to compromise those things from the very beginning. So just double check yourself, sitting in your chair, good angle, music, you can see your music and you've got enough space between you and the next chair over. And also maybe over here on this side, you never know, sometimes things get a little tight. So bassoon players, you need to speak up for your space. Sometimes we really need to be a little more, um, advocate for ourselves a little bit more. So when we go to play, a good embouchure is something that looks a little bit like a whistle, like a, or oh, oh, so that we're not smiling. This is, this will take the, the uh, strength of our lips away from the reed. And so we want to have that, all that really nice um, ability of our embouchure. So embouchure, French for mouth opening here. So we whistle and we're going to put just a little bit of our um, bottom lip over our teeth, not a lot, but just enough to cushion. And if I'm taking a good breath, because breath is really important here, um, when I'm breathing, I'm thinking about breathing so that my air comes from closer to the seat and not from my chest. So when I go to breathe, I think about breathing and ex making sure that I've got lots of use of my muscles close down to my hips. If we breathe only here, then we really are not going to have enough air to support the instrument. So bassoon players need to have good breath. Um, and a good way to check that air that comes from down low is to go, <laughs> Can you feel those muscles right there? Try that. <coughs> and with your hand there, you should feel those muscles move. So now, knowing where they are, can you take a breath that does the same thing? And hold it so that you've got breath here. And these are the muscles that are going to do the most work. We don't want these muscles doing all the work because these are the ones that will wear out faster. So if we have good air, then our embouchure will actually help us. So we take a good breath. And to start with, I would say, can we put on thumb, finger one, finger two, and finger three. So we're going to touch that key, first finger down, second finger, and third finger. Take a nice breath. And your right hand should just be resting on the instrument. It really doesn't need to do much of anything. And it can be very relaxed. So we'll try this, taking a good breath. <sighs> notice very centered and the air is going down all the way in other words when I'm playing I'm thinking about blowing air that's going all the way through the instrument even though it's not going all the way through here eventually we get to the lowest note but really the sound is coming out our other holes we want the air to deliver the sound out of the instrument so let's try something else so can we try starting at the same pitch and can you play this now this pattern using just those three fingers do you 
notice how even the sound is and just play up to that note and back down. How about this? <laughs> play it or maybe if you've played another instrument that might have been the first song you learned. It's a good song to learn in the beginning because it just uses those three notes and if we use those three notes and just get our idea of air, embouchure, playing position and blowing through the instrument that's a really good place to start. One of the best ways to start playing the bassoon is to play with notes you know and to play just uh, just across the range of the instrument that is in just the staff. And by the way, um, uh, learning to play the bass clef is important too when you're learning to play the bassoon because we don't play in the treble clef. So it will look the same a bit on the page, in other words, five lines, four spaces. But in the bass clef, um, the notes on the second space, for example, is C for us, and that's the note that we have fingered here. So if we're starting and focus just on notes that are in the staff, then we can begin to expand. We can expand a little bit down and a little bit up so that um, what we're going to start with are actually uh, five note scales. So five notes and then add a couple of notes until you can play an eight note scale. Um, so we don't need to start with the whole range of the instrument and we don't need to start with all of those eight note scales. And um, if we're playing just pitches, then we eventually can get around to our scales and learning our key signatures, and that will come later, certainly. So I would start in using the idea that uh, uh, earlier, where we played just those, those uh, first three notes, I would do this. <laughs> down a step. Then the next note we would play one finger on, another finger down, and then our third finger. in terms of going only to F. Um, past F requires a bit more technique um, and um, being able to play lower than I just played also takes a bit more technique. So when you feel really comfortable about those notes in that range, then we can expand them. Um, and then the last thing, of course, is to just play tunes by ear. If you know some tunes and you want to make up some tunes, uh, the best way to do this is to not concentrate on needing to read music right away, but getting a good sound on the bassoon. And when the instrument feels comfortable in your hands, and when you can make a good sound with it, and you've got a sense of, of what it takes to play up and down across the notes we just played, then, uh, then it's time to move on. Um, the danger of trying to uh, move too fast, in other words, wanting to play you know, something off the page, you know, read music, um, that seems like an attractive thing to do, but in many ways, when we're starting to learn something new, something technical, like playing an instrument, there are lots of things to be thinking about. We've got air, we've got fingers, we've got seating position, embouchure, all those things, and our brain is working really hard to make sure all of that works together. And if we add reading music, then our brain gets one more of our senses, like being able to see and read music. And if you're not familiar with the bass clef, then understanding what it sounds like first and then looking at the page and identifying the notes is a much quicker way of learning to read and play the bass clef. 
So I hope these ideas have helped you. I hope this gives you a chance to get started. Um, and if you've already started, maybe help you with some things that you hadn't thought about. Um, and the last thing I'd like to say is that in the last um, section of the uh, handout that's included uh, with the masterclass, you'll find a list of pieces that would be good to start with. There are technique books, um, some solo literature. So you get an idea of the kind of thing that you can start to play. And it's written music written specifically for the bassoon. And so I think that's really important also is to start with music that was always intended for our instrument because it will ask you to play the instrument in a way that is uh, sort of sequential and makes sense in terms of how to learn to play the instrument. So some, uh, some thoughts about learning to play and if you have any questions, um, let me know. I'd like to hear from you.